Hello my friends, welcome back to Keto in the Chaos. My name is Tammy and on this channel I like to share all my tips and tricks on how I lost 200 pounds without bariatric surgery and how you can be successful on your own weight loss journey. So if that's what you're looking for, don't forget to click the subscribe button and ring the bell for more videos like this one to inspire you to get started. Welcome back to another Tummy Tuck video. This is another update and I'm so glad that you stopped by to check in on me on my surgery journey. This is my plastics after extreme weight loss journey and it is week six update. In this video, I'm going to share with you what my weights are doing, what my current eating habits are, um, the activity level that I'm at, I've got a doctor visit to share, and of course a scar update and a surprise at the end that you do not want to miss. So stick around, this is going to be a fun video. Let's get into it. So if you are new here, you may not realize the surgeries that I actually had. So of course, I'm going to detail that really quickly for you. I had a 360 degree belt lipectomy, and that meant that the entire lower body was lifted and I had a tummy tuck in the front. I also had a vertical incision called a fleur-de-lis down the front to reduce the loose skin that was above my belly button because it was just a huge amount up there. And that was the best way to get that nice figure that I wanted without dealing with a lot of loose skin that I wasn't gonna be happy with. I also, of course, had my diastasis recti repaired because that's pretty much standard with every tummy tuck. I had a 15 centimeter diastasis that was repaired by my surgeon, which is pretty incredible. And since we were already doing surgery, I decided to add on a surgery. I had my inner thighs done because the lower body lift would lift the outer thigh. I wanted the inner thigh to match because I had a lot of wrinkly skin there, so I had that removed as well. All the prices and as well as my surgeon's information should be in the, in the about section below. You will also find in the about section ways that you can donate to the channel to help me out to pay for this surgery so that I can afford to get my upper body done because that is my next goal is to have my arms, um, breast lift and a bra line lift which is going to be another extensive surgery in the future. So I've got to pay this one off so that I can move to the next one. So that anything you're looking for that I talk about in this video, you'll probably find that information in the about section. So be sure to check there before you ask because I probably already gave you the answer, except for how tall I am, which is five foot seven, because apparently I keep forgetting to mention that. Um, and a lot of people ask, so. Five foot seven, and I was 178 on the day of surgery. My doctor removed eight and a half pounds of loose skin from my body. I'm not sure if that included the thighs as well as everything. Um, I never asked him, but that's what he told me the amount was that he removed. So it should have been technically 169. Um, my highest weight the week after surgery was 205. The lowest I've seen on the scale since then was 185. And that is due to the extraordinary amount of swelling post-surgery. Now last week, I really thought that I was heading in the no swelling zone because last week I actually finally was starting to look like I didn't have any swelling. But alas, that has not been a case. Week six, has I have been on the struggle bus. I have been so frustrated with the swelling. It came on really quick for some reason last Sunday. I don't know if it is because I had I went to church for the first time and I sat for two hours and then I came home and I sat and edited um, for a few hours and then I sat downstairs on an uncomfortable chair and talked to my kids for the like the whole evening like I would normally do on a normal day. And that night I swelled up so bad and it has not improved all week. So that has been extremely frustrating. And in fact, I did a little clip about my swelling and my visit to the doctor so that you guys can see the dramatic difference. Like if you saw my five week video and then you see my six week video, you would think that I put on like 10 pounds. It's insane. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys those clips and we'll come back and talk about it. I'm going to the doctor's office this morning and I just wanted to show you, I really hope that they're not doing before and after like or after pictures today because unlike last week when I went to the doctor where I was super skinny, today I am super swollen and bloated. Yay. So I wanted to show you guys that because um, this is something that I have learned on the tummy tuck boards is really common. The swelling from tummy tuck can last six months to a year and it can make you feel like you have gained weight when you 
have probably not gained weight because it comes on like overnight. Like one day you're like bored flat and the next day. And so I just wanted to show you what I look like as six, almost six weeks out so that you guys can see what that, what happens. And so you can like know that that is normal. So here I am today. You can see, you can see compared to last week's video where I was like, <laughs> um, I am really swollen today. Like ye yesterday was worse. Like last night before I went to bed, I actually looked like I had a bee belly again and like gave me a heart attack. Um, let me tip this down a little bit so you can see a little better. But even this morning, you can still see kind of a bee belly going on, which is literally my worst nightmare. Swelling right here above the belly button has not happened to me before. And till now, yay. So that kind of sucks, but you can see, and it's starting to make me, you know, feel a little bit like, ah, freaking out. But I know it's just swelling because it was even worse last night and it was just like out to here and I was like, what is happening? So anyway, yeah, I mean, I can still definitely pull it in and sh show you guys some abs if I really want to, which is another, you know, proof that it's swelling. But yeah, like that is super stressful that I can look like this, you know, one week and then like that the next. <laughs> so I thought you guys might like to see that um, my everything's swollen, including these, which yay, but and this, which I don't know if it's yay or not, yay or nay, but um, I'm wearing this sports bra today because it's the only one that will keep containing the girls. My other bra is starting to <laughs> explode out the top. So I really hope this is actual body fat and this is just swelling because wouldn't that be awesome? <laughs> but no, anyway, that's what I look like today going to the doctor. Wish me luck. Let's hope it's not after pictures day. If it is, I'll be sure to suck in real good. <laughs> Got the good mirror today. Alrighty guys, well it's official. I have finally graduated from not getting going in to see the plastic surgeon every week. Um, he doesn't see any more seromas that need to be drained. He said anything that might still be left in there will absorb and it should be fine. All my wounds are healed up. All of my scabs are gone. And I have been cleared for exercise. I've been cleared, well he said anything that doesn't hurt. So he says I can do lifting, but if it hurts like something really hurts, not like uncomfortable, but stabbing pain, then I shouldn't do it. I don't know if I'm ready for the chicken bucket workout yet, but that makes me a lot less stressed about picking up things around the house because I've been like avoiding picking up things and taking out the trash and things like that that I normally would just do because I've been worried about picking things up. But he said that should be fine. Everything looks great. Cleared me for swimming and baths again. <gasps> Thank you. So hopefully at some point this week, I will go swimming. I don't know, it won't probably won't be today because my pool is looking awfully algae filled thanks to no one being in there and uh, no one caring. <laughs> it's more of that than anything. Um, uh, but yeah, so I'm gonna get that cleared out and hopefully get into the pool. And yeah, I'm excited about taking a bath for sure. Like I have missed that more than anything. That's, you know, I am a baths girl. It's what I do to care for myself. And even though all the downtime has been nice, it would be nice if I could have downtime like in the bath because that's where I like to be. So yeah, you don't have to go back. Everything looks good. Um, he was gonna do pictures today, but he saw the bloating and was like, you know, let's wait till three months and do them in six weeks. <laughs> so I think he realized he could show a better before and after result if he waits till my swelling goes down a bit because it was bad. I wish we would have done the pictures last week when I was totally snatched because I looked so good last week and then this week, bloat city. So anyway, that's the update for my last visit for the plastic surgeon for a while. I'll be going back in six weeks at three months post-op for my official after pictures. Crazy, right? Like, oh my heck, I cannot even believe the swelling and it has not improved. In fact, I feel like it has gotten worse over the week. I have been wearing my compression and then I actually started trying not to wear it because the doctor told me that I should wean off. I didn't talk about that in the video because I ended up texting him later because I forgot to ask him 
when I should stop compression. And he told me that I should start to wean off of it now. And so for the last couple of days, I have actually tried to, to wean off of the compression. I haven't worn it at all, hoping that maybe that might improve something, but no, still same amount of swelling. In fact, it's kind of worse. Yeah, so as far as weights go, um, my weights for the week were 186.6, 184.2. Oh, look, I lied. 184.2. That's the lowest I've seen. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Dang. Uh, 184.2, 188.8, 188.4, 190.6, 189.8, and 191.2 for an average of 188.4, which is up 1.8 pounds from last week. So definitely not heading in the direction that I'm hoping for. I'd really like to see the 170s again, especially because the doctor took so much skin off of me. I know there is a very high possibility that I have put on some body fat. Okay, who are we kidding? My boobs are like a whole size bigger. I have definitely put on some body fat. At least I'm hoping I have because I would really hate that this to, for this to be swelling and for it to go away because I have it in all the right places. Basically, um, I've gotten bigger in my chest and in my booty area, which, hello, ladies, isn't that what we're going for to begin with? Which gave, it gives me a more hourglass figure. My stomach has stayed the same other than the swelling. It doesn't appear to have any fat growing there, but I mean, who knows? I, it's so hard to tell. Adding surgery to the mix makes the scale even more complicated and even more frustrating because there's just no way to know if it's swelling, water retention. Like I used to go crazy over the water retention before. I thought it was hard then. This is, this gives me a whole new level of stress, a whole new level of what the heck is going on with my weight. So yeah, I don't know if it is swelling or if it's body fat or what, but I am starting to get uncomfortable with the number on the scale as well as like even my shirts fitting like I got this super cute shirt in fact this is a good opportunity for talk about this little gift I got in the mail because it was super fun I have this little um well I have these two little notes um they basically say the same thing but it basically says you're gonna rock these shirts with your new body love your videos I just wish that I could get started myself I'm afraid to do so due to hubby's coronary artery dis disease and I totally get that being frustrating um, sending you continued love and support from Cindy Dickey. Thank you, Cindy, so much. Um, firstly, I will say you can't take care of him if you don't take care of you. And I know that trying to lose weight is really hard when you're dealing with other things that are super stressful. So if I have any advice to give you, my main advice would be try to focus on eating only three meals a day and eliminate snacking and make the bulk of those meals lean protein. Try to eat your protein first and get your carbs and fats second. And just that's that's gonna give you a good start that you don't have to think about, you don't have to track. So there's a little tidbit for you, Cindy, as a reward or a thank you for giving me these shirts. But I have to say, like, this is a size medium shirt. It's meant to be tight, but it's fitting me tighter than most of my small shirts. And it's, you know, well, I'm just gonna show you to, mm, yeah, you got going on here. Yeah. What the heck is happening on there? And I feel like this shirt is just, I mean, it's tight on my arms. Every shirt's tight on my arms, but I just feel like the shirt is like tight. She also gave me this super cute um, sweater, which is a crop sweater. And I think this one is a small, but I think I'm gonna have to return it and get a medium because my boobs make it so it barely covers my boobs, which, you know, it's meant to be a crop sweater not a teeny weeny, you know what I mean? So I was thinking I'd wear like a cami under it because, you know, I'm not gonna show off my belly, especially not in the winter. Uh, well, not at all. I mean, that's, let's just be honest. I'm not gonna be doing that. I don't do that on a daily basis, even if I look hot. So thank you, Cindy, for this. I appreciate it. And that just kind of was the segue for me saying that my tops are starting to fit really tight, which is, I don't need to be like, you know, Anyway, I don't know how to explain it, but I'm starting to feel a little bit uncomfortable with that. I think I'm to the size, I don't need to be any bigger, and if I keep gaining weight, I could just become giant, and it'll be really difficult to find clothes that will fit me. And, you know, I might not go okay, but... Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I guess what I, that is all leading up to, because the doctor has given me 
basically full reign to go back to normal activity wise and everything. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try to get back on keto and see if that will help some of this swelling that I'm still hanging on to let go. Now, I know it may not help that much because in all honesty, I know a lot of people on my Facebook tummy tuck group. It's not my own group, by the way. I'm just an active participant over there. Um, but a lot of people have come, a lot of people over there are keto still and still swelling. So I'm guessing it probably won't help that much. But it will be a good way for me to kind of like kill some of these sugar cravings. I am now getting to the point where I would prefer to eat carbs over protein and that's not good. So I don't want to be heading down that road and starting into screw it land. Nope. We don't want to be going there or all or nothing land, which you feel like you have to eat everything because you're not going to have it tomorrow. I don't want to go down those rabbit holes of doom. I've been there, been there and done that, never doing that again. So um, I've decided that this, this coming week I am going to be going keto. I am doing my very best to track because I want to see where my calories will end up. And my goal is for me to do like my maintenance calories. So about 2,200 calories, my old maintenance calories from before I did the surgery because I figure this, the, the healing caloric need is slowing down now after six weeks. It probably, especially since I don't have wounds, um, infections, no more seromas. Oh, that was good. No more seromas. Um, I do have soreness and I, I do, you know, get, you know, I, I am still building a scar and like that's going to be three or four months of building the scar, things like that. So my body is still doing things with regards to the surgery, but it isn't as major as it was before. So I think as long as I keep my calories regular amount that going into ketosis isn't going to be dangerous or anything at this point. So that's my plan, best laid plans and all that. We'll see what happens. I, of course, will update you guys um, next time I get on here, which may not be, I think I may just wait and do like a two month update at this point because now it's just kind of becoming the same thing and the same thing and the same thing. And as much as I know you guys probably want to keep looking at my gorgeous stomach, I mean, who wouldn't? It's getting kind of old because nothing's changing in between other than I'm just looking really swollen and then I have to apologize for how swollen I look and then I have people going, hmm, she's getting fat. I see her getting fat. And you know there are people saying that. Even if you sit here and say, it's not that. And even if I am getting fat, it's my boobs. There's still people saying it. I know you're saying it. I, I hear you saying it right now. Don't say it down there because I don't need that kind of stuff in my life. I am able and I'm capable of taking care of my own self. Shocking, I know. Completely shocking. Okay, moving on. That was where you going? Oh, yes. Moving on to the next thing, which is, of course, what you came here for, right? How's my scar looking? So, I made a little clip for you and I'm going to stick that in here right now. And this is not the fun secret at the end. So stick around. I know this video can be long, but trust me, you don't want to miss it. All right, morning guys. It is six weeks post-op today and I wanted to give you a little bit of an update on my scar. I know I already showed you um, a little bit a few days ago when I went to the doctor how uh, much swelling and bloating that I was having. I'm still kind of in the same situation today. But I wanted to document this because it's officially been one week since I started my scar care. So the scar care I did this week is I've been using the Silogen gel every single um, morning after my shower. And then I've been using bio oil at night. Um, right before I go to bed. In the afternoon, I've been, I, I started out at the beginning of the week doing Aquaphor in the middle of the afternoon. And then just a few days ago, I started, I switched over to this CeraVe. And the reason why I switched over to this is because um, this is basically like petroleum jelly, like Vaseline, which is great for keeping the moisture in, which is the idea. But this one, is also good at keeping the moisture in and it has hyaluronic acid in it and i saw a video that said hyaluronic acid is good for scars i don't know i'm just trying a few things so that's after a week of that i also have been using red light therapy and um, this is the red light therapy wand that i bought i think it was like 70 dollars it's definitely not cheap i turn it on maybe it's dead why do you have to die <laughs> 
<laughs> I just blinded myself. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah, you can't see it. There you go. Little red light. Um, it needs to shine on the skin to get below the, the upper layer or whatever. It's supposed to help with healing. I could have been using it the whole time. I just didn't realize it. But it also is really good for scars. But it takes forever because you can see this is the amount of space it covers. And you know I have a scar that goes all the way around my body, all the way down my legs, and all the way up my front. And so it takes about, I think it's, it has its own little cycle. I think it's like five to ten minutes um, in one area. And then I move to the next area and the next. It takes forever. So I've only done this three times this week. And that's probably the most I'll ever do because it takes so much time. I don't always have time to do it. Um, I don't know if this is worth buying or not. And I really won't know because I'm trying so many things. But it was something I saw recommended and I decided I was going to buy pretty much everything that I saw recommended and try everything. Um, at, least, at least to a degree. I don't have any scar strips, silicone scar strips, because a lot of the videos I watched said that the gel is just as good or even better because you can massage it in. And it's the massage and the moisture that makes the difference with the scar. So if you're gonna use the strips, you still need to take time to massage before you put them on. And you can start massaging sooner than I did. Apparently you can start massaging earlier. I don't know how early, like if you have open wounds, you can't massage those areas, but anywhere where it's pretty much closed from like three weeks on, you can massage and you can even add um, you know, moisturizers and things like that. But the silicone stays on and it puts like a barrier and it keeps the moisture in and it also is breathable so it lets oxygen in and out, which is what makes it so ideal for scars. So out of all the things and all the videos I've seen, silicone is number one choice. So if you have to choose one product, find a silicone that you like. Um, when this one's gone, I don't know if I'll buy Silagen again. I might just buy something I can buy on Amazon for cheap. I don't know, we'll see, but that's where I am. And I've talked way too much about that. So let's see how things are looking. Okay, let's see if I can show you. So this is my Fleur de Lis scar. It starts here and goes all the way down to the T, which is here. Um, this is probably my best scar. It's been the thinnest from the beginning. Um, I feel like it's hardly visible when I'm just like, you know, from far away, if I have like the swimsuit on. Like, so I think that it's um, doing really well and probably would even without the, the thing, even without the scar treatment. But it's still really moisturized from last night. I haven't showered yet. Um, you can see I'm still sw swollen from last night. Swelling has not gone down. I'm starting to have this little above the belly button swelling, which I just hate. Ah, I know it's common, but I hate it. And I was really hoping I wouldn't have to deal with it because I hadn't. Um, my belly button is looking pretty good. I'm liking the shape of it. I'm liking the little hood that it has when the skin is kind of hanging, when it's not full of, of fluid and puffiness. But yeah, you can see when I, you know, pull in, it's got a nice little hood over the top, which is good. And I think that the scar is looking nice. It doesn't have a lot of scarring around the edge because my doctor does inside stitches only, which is awesome, by the way. So yeah, I'm gonna see if I can tuck this. I didn't really wanna be in just my bra today because <clears throat> my bra, it's not fitting me. Yeah, yeah, like it usually does. And this is my pajama that I slept in last night. Cute, right? Okay, so let's see. Let's look at the T scar. It's probably the hardest scar out of all of them. It's like the worst area to treat. But I feel like it's looking a lot better. So, when I first started out, I don't know if you guys remember, but I had a, like a big, huge fold over right here. It looked like a big pleat. That pleat is starting to iron out. You can see it's still kind of there right here, but it's starting to iron out. Um, this is the stiffest part of the scar. You can see I can push, 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 and that is literally pushing as hard as possible. It does not move. Whereas other places, you know, I can push in on my stomach. Whereas here, it is like rock solid. So. Um, I spend a lot of time like massaging this area right here because it's really, really stiff. <laughs> and the idea is to break, kind of break that up underneath there to make it like a little bit less huge. Cause like the scar forms all the way underneath your skin and that's why it's always there, kind of like a tattoo. So 
you got to alter the underneath skin, which is why the red light therapy, because it can get underneath the skin and affect the layers below. So this is keeping the moisture in so that your body can deal. And so are all these products basically. Um, and then this it helps with healing underneath the skin. And you can see this is how I do it. I just kind of hold it about, you know, four or five inches away. And I just hold it like that until the light stops going, which is about, I think about five minutes. I haven't really timed it, I'm not sure. So yeah, so here's the side scars. Um, you can see the, the ones from my drains. These are the worst scars pretty much. They are just dark and I don't know if they'll lighten up or not. Um, this scar right along here is a lot redder, I feel like, than this one. It is really hard to tell in camera. Um, it's funny because I've seen other people say that it looks redder in camera. Mine looks less red. I feel like mine's redder, but you can see the redness will eventually go away. And you can tell by if you push on it and it goes away and turns white, that it's blood vessels and pigmentation from that and not the actual scar. You can kind of see what the actual scar looks like if you push enough of it really quick and then look at it really quick. You can see how it'll look in the future. Clever, right? That's pretty cool. So yeah, that is the front, I mean, that is that side. Here is this side. Um, where's my other drain? These drain holes look a little better because like I said, they're a little bit more advanced healing because they came out sooner than the others. But you can see, like if I push on this one, it's still pretty dark when you let go. Got a little bit of a dot there, but you know, it's not the worst thing in the world. Um, but yeah, same thing. It's really red along this side area, in my opinion. Um, as far as the thighs, let's see if I can. Okay. As far as the thigh scar goes, I mean, it's looking as good as it could look, I think, at this point. Let's see if I can pull it up so you can see it better with the light, but. Um, it's, it is pretty thin. When I first started out, this part right here had a huge fold and it looked really scary. It looked like a big roll of, of skin, like, you know, and now it's totally flat. Um, you can't see that little roll of skin anymore. It looks thin like the other, but it's a lot darker than the waist scarring. I don't know if you can see this compared. This is lighter and this is darker. So, um, but it's looking pretty good, I think. Personally, I think it's pretty great. Other side, same kind of thing. It just goes down to here. Um, when you push on it, the redness doesn't go away as much. So I don't know what that means. That means maybe my scar is going to be darker than my other ones. But there you go. You've seen it all. And that's where I'm at after one week of scar care. All right, so there's my scar update for my scar care. Sadly, I have so much scarage. My bottle of Silogen lasted me one whole week and that was it. The very next morning after I made that video, it was gone. So I have been trying to decide if I'm gonna go back because I have to buy that at my plastic surgeon's office. I can't buy that just you know off Amazon, which is super inconvenient since I'm not going there anymore. And I think that I, it's just plain silicone. It's nothing like exciting. It's the same medical grade silicone you can get online. There's a few different types out there. And so I'm looking for one that is going to be good. So I had just purchased one. And of course I'll be giving you guys a review. The thing is, there's really no way to know if it's really doing anything. My goal is to keep it moisturized, keep massaging it, and keep it covered with silicone as much as possible. So that's where I'm at with scar care. Um, for me, I'm looking at my scar and I'm thinking I'm not gonna have any major issues. So it's very likely, even if I didn't do anything at all, other than sun protection, that it would end up with a tiny white line, just like my daughter's beautiful chin did that my plastic surgeon fixed seven years ago. So I'm not super stressed about it, but I am doing it because I feel like it's important. The red light, who knows, guys? I mean, you don't have to waste your money on this stuff. I just did because I was curious to see if it will work. So we will see. I'll keep doing the same things and, of course, keep updating you guys on how they go. Some fun things I am now doing. I am now able to lift things. Oh, my gosh. 
when you do not know how many things weigh pounds until you are told you cannot lift pounds. It's one thing to have a child that you have to pick up, but it's another to not even have that to deal with and try and see. I mean, I thought I'd be golden because I didn't have any kids to pick up, but no, I can't take out the heavy trash. I can't like empty the bins. I can't carry in the groceries. I can't, gosh, what else? Like um, lift the cat litter, lift the cat litter box to dump it. Like the stuff is so stressful. Things I used to do. Oh, feed the gosh dang chickens. Those poor chickens. My my sweet 11 year old daughter has been absolutely wonderful taking care of my baby chickens. Like she has done a great job, but it stinks that I can't go out there and lift the chicken feed bucket and things like that. So I'm super excited. The doctor released me from all limits. His only thing that he said was, is that if it hurt really bad, I should stop doing it. So far, the things I've been lifting, which of course was the trash, that was like the first thing I did, and the kitty litter boxes, oh my heck, because nobody messes with them but me, or unless I yell, because they're all doing other things. And like, you know, my jobs, right? My jobs, I have jobs I do that they don't usually have to do. Um, what else did I, what I do? Oh, I went to a clothing exchange and I lifted the big boxes of clothing and I sorted out the clothing got down and up off the floor looking through the clothing piles. Oh my goodness, that was kind of painful, admittedly. Um, and yesterday I actually walked 16,000 steps and that included many stairs, going up and down hills, a little bit of jogging, light jogging. I didn't do much running, tried really hard not to run. There was one time when I had to book it a little bit quick um, for this big youth event that I was not even supposed to do anything for, but just couldn't resist. And since he'd given me the green light, I decided I was just gonna go and get some video um, of that for my vlog. And then I ended up just getting asked to do things because, you know, that's how it happens. Can you what? admittedly and really 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 swollen <laughs> so that's, but it wasn't too bad as soon as I started feeling some pain which was probably about five o'clock at night I've been going pretty hard for a few hours um I took a break and stopped and I listened to my body but yeah that was fun uh, another thing that I've been released to do is swimming. You guys know how much I love being in the water. I usually take a bath every single week. I have yet to take one since he released me. I'm working on finding time. Now that I've worked that out of my life, now I have to figure out my new schedule to work it back into my life. But I did do something super fun and I'm gonna show you a couple of clips because this is the fun thing that you've been waiting for that you may not have seen. I stuck this little secret in one of the other videos, and you may not have seen it unless you're a special, but today's the day that we get the before and after of the swimsuit. Well, hello guys. As you guys probably already know, the doctor has cleared me to go swimming. If any of you guys know me for very long, you know that I love swimming. In fact, I love swimming so much. I went swimming in our backyard pool last year probably every single day because of COVID and we didn't have anything going on. I literally swam almost every single day all summer. 
I have only been in the pool one day this summer, and that day I wore this swimsuit. And if you guys are diehard fans, those of you who are, you comment below if you have seen this swimsuit in a previous video. If you are a diehard fan, you will know that I snuck a before clip of me wearing this swimsuit into one of my surgery prep videos towards the end of a very long one. So those of you who made it to there can feel really great and pat yourselves on the back for seeing the swimsuit already. But those of you who haven't, I'm gonna be putting that clip in for you in just here in just a minute. But I will say, I will preface it with saying, that this swimsuit, purchasing this swimsuit from online was literally one of the major straws that broke the camel's back and made me know for sure that I was making the right decision when it came to surgery because when I put this swimsuit on, it literally broke my heart. And so I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys see that clip and then I'll be back to show you the after. So I think one of the straw that broke the camel's back moments happened when I got a new swimsuit. So I searched online for a swimsuit that I think might look good, you know, that my girls won't migrate out of, that my back skin, my side skin won't migrate out of. And so far, I really haven't come across anything. But when I saw this super cute swimsuit, I totally had to have it. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is perfect because it has little flutter sleeves, right? So it doesn't show off as much of this. I mean, it shows off some of that, but it feels like it's not showing as much. It's nice, The it's nice V-neck. Everything's kind of contained, right? Look at my back even. I don't know if you can see. My back looks awesome in it. Like, it doesn't show any of my back lines. It like pulls them over to the side. Makes my back look really good, right? Right, it looks good. Yeah, but let me show you. This was one of the main reasons and probably the straw that broke the camel's back that made me decide I had to do the surgery. Yeah. That's just not gonna work for me. I mean, what do you guys think? Can you picture me going, trying to go out in a swimsuit like this? What is that even? It's just, <clears throat> it's gross. So, yeah, that ticked me off. And it inspired me to search all over the internet for any kind of skirt that I could find that I could wear with it so that it would even be reasonable for me to use this season. But as you can see, it's not gonna be without a skirt because even in the booty, like there's like, oh, I don't know. There's all this skin, you know, on the side. So, Got this skirt. And still, do you see this? Look at this. Oh, can't even make that look. Oh. You see what I'm saying? So I wear a size small. I should be able to look small. And I don't. I still have this weird bulge. And that's one of the reasons that I decided to do the surgery because I just hate it. I don't want that anymore. Alrighty, so after that, who is ready? Who is ready to see the swimsuit without the bulge hanging out of the bottom? I know I was, and I actually, this is the first time I've put it on, so I was kind of surprised at how it fit me. Um, it doesn't quite fit me how I was imagining it would, but it is definitely an improvement. I don't know if I would still go out in public because the back of this, well, I'll show you, but the back is not as much coverage as I would like on the derriere section. But the rest of it is awesome, and I can't wait to show you my after swimsuit reveal. Alrighty, here it is. Here it is in all its glory. Um, as you can see, you definitely can see my thigh scars in the front. It is a little higher up on the hips, but my hip scar does not hang out. Um, this is actually just a panting line, line from my clothes I was wearing earlier. The only scar that shows right here is my drain scar on the side. But here is the side view. 
course with a little bit of swelling like I've been dealing with this week. And this side view. And the back view, I will let you see it. But the back view is probably the main reason I'm probably still gonna wear the skirt cover up if I wear this swimsuit out. I'm not brave enough for the back view just yet. At least not out in public. I don't mind sharing with you guys, but I don't know. But of course, in my backyard swimming pool, why not, right? What do you think? <laughs> a little bit, little bit of booty showing. Definitely in style now with the larger thighs and booty area. Um, but yeah, you can see that this fits so much better. There's nothing hanging out right here. It's so nice to see that trim, slim look. And I'm super happy about it. So I just wanted to show you guys that if I wanted to wear the skirt over it, like if I don't want to worry about the, <laughs> the booty escaping, which it just might if it, if it gets too excited, if I swim too hard, um, I can still wear the skirt. And it looks so much better. Now, definitely I still have this because of the swelling, but if I just kind of ruche it a little bit, I don't think you're gonna see that very much. But compared to how it looked before, this is like a killer improvement, right? And here you go, the back side. Not too bad. And I definitely would feel comfortable wearing this out, though I wish I could be a little bit braver to wear it without the bottoms. Um, I do have another swimsuit that I think I'm a little bit more comfortable in that I bought that's more of a hipster style tankini. Um, maybe I'll go try that on and show you guys just for fun. All right, so this is actually the first two-piece swimsuit I've ever purchased for myself in my life. I never dared to do a tankini before because I was too afraid that things would like fall out. I had a tendency to buy the ruched hold-in type one pieces so that things wouldn't just escape randomly. As you can see, even from, from previously, things can still escape from one pieces if you get the wrong style. That one is probably maybe not my best style even now after surgery. So I actually knew that, I kind of figured that going in and I've been looking at clearance stuff because it's all been on clearance. And I was able to get two piece swimsuit for, on clearance at two different stores. So they don't match exactly, but at least I was able to buy exactly what I was looking for. I definitely have always preferred a halter top top to hold up the girls. Being able to find something like that was super nice. But I also would always look for something that was maybe more of a flare if I was going to go for like a skirt type thing. This is why I've never bought it because I could never find anything that fit and made me feel like I wasn't going to like fall out everywhere. Um, as you can see, this doesn't have a flare. It is right up against my body. This is the tankini top. I love it. Um, this is a size large top. So I was able to size for the girls, um, which have approved, have improved over the last couple of weeks, believe it or not. Uh, much less saggy and much more full than they were before, which is great. I won't complain about that. Um, and as for the bottoms, the only thing I wish is that they were more like the panties where they were a little skinnier on the side. So here's the bottoms. You can see they go up pretty far on the side, which normally I would really love that, you know, to like kind of hold things in. There's no way I would have been able to wear these before surgery, these, these bottoms. There's no way they would have fit me. They would have been like down here and things would have been falling out the top. So I am super thrilled that I'm able to wear something like this. Now, and if I really, really wanted to be brave, I could make this into a little, one of those little, um, you know, fold over two piece top type things just by, doing this whole deal. I could even maybe um, pin it so that I knew it wouldn't fall off. And then I could walk around in a two piece if I really wanted to at this point, which would be kind of fun. I don't know if I dare, but it would be fun and I would enjoy that um, immensely, right? I mean, who wouldn't? I've never been able to do anything like that before, but I think this is super cute. It's much more comfortable than the other one. So this is probably gonna be what I choose to swim in most often. Um, I don't know if I'll wear it like a two piece or not, but if I just want to go like that, it makes it super easy. The back looks cute. It's up high, so it covers my um, extra skin in the back as much as possible. 
Whereas the other one exposes my back, which is nice, but it exposes way too much of my booty. Um, as you can see, this one does not overexpose the boot. <laughs> kind of holds it in a little better, which is nice. Even when it's like up like a two piece, you can see my scar is covered. Doesn't show. Um, it covers everything. The only scar that shows in this one, if I'm doing a two piece, is the drain scar here. And of course the lovely thigh scars, which are gonna show no matter what suit I wear because it's on my thighs. But that's okay. I'm super thrilled about how I'm looking in a swimsuit and excited to get out there and try it out. Well guys, I got all ready to come out here in the pool and I come out here and the pool is totally scungy. Like really gross. So, first official exercise, I came out and I tested the water, no chlorine, I added as much chlorine as I could find in the house, not enough, but it's a start. And I hooked up this um, vacuum brush thing and I am, yeah, do an exercise guys, my first official exercise post-surgery, cleaning the scungy pool bottom. guys in the pool <laughs> one thing I didn't think about was that it's been really cold the last little while at night and the water is really cold <sighs> hopefully I will get used to it apparently the roosters are really excited that we're out because I have four roosters now and they are annoying but anyway I'm in the pool guys be proud first time in the pool post-surgery woohoo Eddie who is now splashing me with water already dude stop it Dude, dude. <laughs> How fun was that? Oh my gosh. I actually look like, seriously, and I'm just gonna put the before and after right up here for you guys so that we can discuss the girls. People think I'm just kidding when I say that I may have gained some body fat and it's gone to the ladies. This swimsuit picture is undeniable. Look at that. I mean, what the heck? It's like they took the bottom of me and like popped it into the top of me. Only they didn't. Yeah, they didn't. <laughs> I mean, let's be grateful for the small things, right ladies? One of the biggest fears that people have when they get a tummy tuck is that that when if they do any have some regain, they'll regain it in strange places like, you know, middle back. You never know, right? I'm thrilled. I'm absolutely thrilled with the before and after. Like, I cannot even believe the difference. Now, the swimsuit is still not comfortable enough for me to wear in public. The backside is just a little too skinny for me to feel comfortable. So I think I'm gonna stick with the halter top one that I wore in the pool with Jasper. Um, the pool was a little disappointing. It was cold. It's, even though I spent a hot ton of time this last week cleaning it, putting, putting chemicals in and whatever, the bottom still was kind of gungy and I just, I didn't enjoy it. I stayed in there for like a whole hour anyway because I could and I wanted to be in the water, but it was literally like swimming in a lake it felt like and it was just like, mm, not my favorite thing. So yeah, swimming, swimming days may be getting to the end here. I don't know, we'll see how the weather goes this week and whether or not we can clean it. I'm gonna vacuum it and try vacuuming it some more. And I mean, doing the best I can, right? I mean, Dave only has so much time and doing with the swims, dealing with the pool because I haven't been getting in it all summer. It's been his last priority. And the kids haven't even been in it in like, I think like almost a month. So nobody's been in it. Nobody's taking care of it. You can imagine what it was like when I looked at it the first time. That was way better. I'm looking forward to my bath at least. I'm gonna be planning one probably maybe tomorrow. I don't know, we're gonna see how it goes. I actually took some before pictures of my skin floating in the bath. So I'm kind of excited to get in the bath and take some afters. Um, probably will put those, I probably won't put those in here cause I don't think I did a video, but I will put them on Instagram. So if you're not already following me, Keto Chaos on Instagram, you should definitely go check it out. I've been posting all of my pictures, updated pictures over there. So if you're looking just for pictures and you wanna see like the progression, um, you should definitely go over there and check it out because that's where I've been posting most of my pictures. 
And yeah, I think that's it for this video. So thank you so much for hanging out with me. Don't forget to check out the about section and offer up support if you can, or at least buy some built bars or some other promotional products and give me a little cut of the money so that I can keep going on this journey. Oh my gosh, it's nuts. I still can't even believe this is real. How is this real life? Ah, it's awesome. And I will talk to you all again soon.